All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, thanks to everyone for attending and our apologies for our tardiness. Executive session ran a little over. If you'd rise and join me for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Mason, roll call. Mrs. Friday? Here. Mr. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sanders? Here. Mr. Sillette? Here. Mr. Schrader? Here. Mr. Sears? Here. Mr. Watts? Here. Uh, a reminder to please silence your cell phone during the meeting. Uh, it's at this time that we uh, have public comment. All comments and questions will be addressed to the chair. Board and staff members will not normally respond to comments or questions during the meeting unless recognized by the president for this purpose. Comments will be limited at the discretion of the president to five minutes or less. Are there any public comments? Thank you. Other public comment? Sure. If you give us your uh, name and address. Hi, my name is Sheree West. I live at 105 Barton Blue Bay in Greensburg Apartments. I have three children at the district. Um, and I'm also a licensed social worker, so I have some questions regarding the position you have um, in the, the draft and the position of the student and family service coordinator. So my three questions are, um, how does the board district see one person being able to effectively do all that is listed within the job description um, for the entire student body? My second question is, how will the coordinator's time be divided within the schools? And then my third question is, um, it mentions different type of assessments, formal, informal assessments would be um, completed by the coordinator. Are those assessments already created or, or are they that have to be created by the individual that takes the decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, when we get to that item on the agenda, we'll have discussion. And if your questions still aren't answered, somebody will, will be in touch. Sure. Any other public comment? Okay, we need to act upon the board minutes, uh, approval of the minutes from our last meeting, May 21st. Are there any questions or comments regarding the minutes? Then we can approve them as submitted. Treasurer's report. Mr. Sears. As usual, we have a consent agenda. Would any board member like any of the <coughs> items considered separately, or are there any questions on any of the items? If not, the chair moves approval of the below mentioned items. Second. Okay, the uh, board's, uh, the president's report. Um, 
We need to inform you that the board met prior to this meeting in executive session as permitted by Section 707 of the Sunshine Act for the purpose of discussing matters of personnel. No official action was taken. I also need to report that board leadership met with a group of Act 93 administrators for an initial fireside chat. It is expected that these meetings will continue periodically with all board members participating in a rotating format. Dr. Redding, Acting Excuse Superintendent's me, Report. Under your report if that's oh, sure. Okay. Um, I would just like to uh, request. Uh, approval for me to register for the PSBA conference uh, coming up in October of this year, October 17th to the 19th, and also to make a room reservation. This has already been budgeted for, and I just would like to request permission to go ahead and let Wendy do my registration for me. Is there any discussion about that? Are there other board members who uh, are interested in attending? I think in the past it's it's been basically you're available to go. So some people go for one day, some go for all. Right. I'd like to go for the entire conference, and at a later time, I'll be interested in applying for the uh, delegate position, for the delegate assembly. But that's later in the fall. And uh, I'm not sure—is this something that we need to vote on? It's a budgeted. It's already budgeted, and I don't remember what your ultimate resolution. But you were at a minimum amount. Did you expand that number to accommodate everyone on the board if they wanted to attend? Well. <laughs> So we're good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Yep. Okay. Uh, under uh, my report, uh, several hot links to uh, data as it relates to enrollment, uh, some information that Dr. Ellis provided um, on the class of 2018 graduates, uh, and a report. Uh, what you see now is enrollment. Item C is a um, action item as it relates to overnight field trip for the music program. Dr. Reddy, yes. B also requires action. Correct. Sorry, moving too quickly. So we need to approve the. Uh, Thank you. The graduates. I so move. Second. Corrine. This would be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I can vote to the contrary during the motion process. Okay. Item C. The, uh, is there a, a motion for the overnight field trip for the musicians? So moved. Second. Corrine. Can I, may I ask a question on that? Oh, sure. Oh, I should ask. Are there questions? Sure. Okay, no problem. Um, I, it doesn't state in there, but I am assuming that there will be a, a reasonable number of male chaperones. It only lists three women. I'm assuming that there will be male chaperones of an appropriate amount. And I'd also inter be interested in um, if there are going to be provisions made for those children who may not be financially uh, able to afford this trip. I don't know if anybody's here from the high school. Too. I don't know about chaperones. Chaperones is a key issue. Generally, we do have male and female, but I just want to make sure that that's that maybe a question that ought to be somehow put in the application. That's just a suggestion for future. Not a bad, not a bad suggestion, but I do think it's it's uh, fairly safe to uh, trust administrators yes. with getting the appropriate uh, number of chaperones. So, any other questions or comments regarding that, Ms. Mason? Item D is a request uh, to approve the job description and proceed with advertisement of the student and family services coordinator position. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ellen. Um, I strongly support this position. I believe that this is something that we need. We need a social worker or social worker slash counselor. 
um, and I've had this conversation with a number of board members and with uh, uh, Dr. Redding, I'm not so thrilled with the, the uh, uh, title that's given, given on this, uh, is it student and family services uh, coordinator, but I will, I will wait until we continue further discussions and begin interviewing before I, you know, I want to see this process move forward, so I will support this, even though I don't like the, the title on the job as, as it Noted. And it would be appropriate, uh, Ms. West? Uh, the question about can one person do all these things, no. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the consensus as we've talked through with uh, building administrators and guidance staff that having another person being able to provide some of these services certainly is a step in the direction of, of what our building principals and guidance staff have seen as needs for students. Um, part of the ambiguity and, and some of the statements is who is out there that would apply and go through the vetting process and having a number of folks uh, in that conversation to find out what skill set somebody might have. So uh, this first year certainly there's there's ample work for one person and anticipation of uh, Strong support from high school or from each of the building administrators and from guidance staff to to use um, this person effectively. If I may ask uh, Ellen a question, just for the record. So you you stated some reservations about the title. Yeah. And I wonder if you could state what you what you have in mind. I just think it should say you know call a spade a spade. This is a social worker position. And I see it that way. Yes, there will come some coordination and finding out, yeah, but I would prefer to see it called social worker because I want us to see, hire a social worker who's there at 10 o'clock in the morning when we're having a child with a meltdown or a student arrives at school and there's some really critical family issues. I don't, I want to, you know, I, I believe that the description itself talks about the law, you know, social work, but and no offense to my friends in the guidance department, I don't want to see another guidance counselor hired, which is one of the possibilities for a background that they have suggested. I strongly want this to be called a social worker, social worker slash uh, maybe a counselor, something like that. If we can find someone with that, um, that certification. Any other comments from the board? Mr. Yes, Sears. I'd like to uh, thank Ms. West for the comments. And in that, in that same vein, my, my concerns, I think, have been stated before, and I'll just restate them. Number one, I think this job description is way too open-ended. There's, there's very little specificity for me to be able to put my arms around and say, this is a social worker, or this is a fill-in-the-blank. My wife is a social worker. That doesn't make me an expert in the, in the matter, but her concerns are things like the permissions, the therapy, the other implications that go along with being a professional social worker. This looks to me like a, a resource, and we're trying to figure out how to use it. So we have this shopping list of responsibilities that may or may not fall under the heading of social worker if you look at it in the context of that profession. I don't see that here. I, I, what I see is this model, this, this monster of, of work responsibilities that could take one, two, three, eight, ten people. It's so unbounded. I, I have that concern. These are professionals. You're saying minimum. Re we are saying minimum requirement of a master's degree. I see nothing in here about budget. I see nothing in here about where they slot with respect to benefits. And, and so we're going to move forward anyway. I think we need to be more specific, and we need to see what we're getting into. Typically, these are one-way processes. There, there's typically no fail-safe that says if this doesn't work, we can back out of it. We don't know how to measure the success of this person. We don't know what the responsibilities. At the end, how do we measure the effectiveness? I, I have no idea. There's a link here to a, uh, a rubric. I wasn't quite sure what that was supposed to, what was the relevance of that, of that question. Um, just very concerned about trying to measure the impact of this individual. Yes, there are a lot of work responsibilities, but under the heading of professional social worker, they don't quite fit. That's that's not what I see. So I'm very concerned about the fact that we're moving forward, we're going to post this thing, we're going to try to figure out what it is after we get the resumes in, 
to see if we can slot the person. I just think that's a, a reversal of how a professional position like this should be approached. We wouldn't do that with a math teacher. We wouldn't say we're going to have somebody that kind of knows math or maybe knows a little science and we'll see if they can figure out how to, how to teach the subject. I'm, I'm very concerned about this. Other comments? Further discussion? We had a motion. We had a second. Mm -hmm. Time to vote, then, Ms. Mason. Uh, I think so. Okay. Scalette? Yes. Watts? Yes. Fryer? Yes. Sears? No. Robinson? Yes. Sanders? No. Schrader? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Item F is a request for an additional uh, kindergarten position at Yorkshire Elementary. Uh, we've been monitoring the enrollment uh, for kindergarten. We are over 100 as it relates to today at Yorkshire, and so that we have a person hired and ready for um, the first day of school, the recommendation is to establish a position uh, that would be for kindergarten. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Item F is uh, recommendations that relate to extracurricular assignments that are inside the contract and um, the items that are listed here have been vetted by the association and by the individuals involved. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. Like requested in the future, we put totals at the bottom of this long list of uh, salaries and stipends just to make it easier for the people who are these members to see the overall impact. This is about $98,000. But now bear in mind, yeah. this isn't new money. I understand that. Okay. I think it's important for the public to, to see what this is. What number did you say? $98,000. I'm adding up all of these. No. I'm, I'm, I'm confused, Joel. Oh. Okay. No, no, we're just on item F, oh, front. Sorry. Okay. Okay. We are paying attention. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> That's a good, good try. Uh, item G. Uh, oh, wait. We got to vote. Did you vote? Yeah. I'm sorry. We had a. Is there discussion? Other discussion? Further discussion? Okay, Ms. Mason. Thank you. Okay. Item G is a request uh, to identify facilities that could be uh, used by other entities in the county if there was an evacuation or uh, uh, emergency. And this hot link is to the agreement that goes back to the York County Emergency Management Director who is coordinate, coordinating this process. Uh, my understanding is this is something that has been done in the past. There is a confidential link that shows phone numbers and building capacity and room capacity that uh, Mr. Gerling has prepared that board members can see, but we're asking you to approve uh, the sharing of our facilities in an emergency. So this, this requires. Do we vote? I mean, does this, does this require a vote? It, ha it has a signature on, so I thought. So we do other, need to. Other yeah, okay. I, I was anticipating a vote. I, I, I have a question. Well, we need yeah. a motion. Oh, I thought we had. Uh, so moved. 
Second. Um, do all the districts participate in this, Dr. Redding? Yes. Okay. I'm and sorry. and non public entities, so it's a broad okay. daycares. I mean, they're really trying to get everybody. To, yeah. Colleges, any anyone who has would have a need to evacuate or to host evacuees. So I suppose the hope is that we don't ever have to cross that bridge, but the vote is we're willing to do so if called upon. Discussion? Ms. Mason? Dr. Ketterman, you're going to tell us about Administrative Rally. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so we spent last week, Tuesday and Wednesday, in our rally retreat uh, setting. The first day on Tuesday was here on site. Uh, Dr. Williams, I should share, was able to come and join us for uh, both days. So Tuesday was here on site. We spent excuse, the morning... Excuse me. Just for the public, Dr. Williams is our superintendent to be coming on board in early July. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Thank you. Um, so Tuesday we spent time on site. We did some get to know you type activities at the beginning. Um, again, since we were new to him and he was new to us. Uh, we also, the administrative team put together a uh, PowerPoint presentation that just basically we were able to reflect and um, capture our successes, our celebrations, our accomplishments for the year. So each building uh, reported out and each division reported out their, um, what they were celebrating from the year. So again, that gave a great picture of where we were. Uh, then the rest of the day was really set, um, spent in uh, goal setting, uh, along with Dr. Williams, who was there to kind of ask us some thought-provoking questions and to uh, help to guide us. So what the end result was, we have, the, what's the beginning of the formation of three broad district goals um, that have several action steps for each uh, building and division under it. So again, it's a, definitely a work in progress, but we got a, a great start on Tuesday. Wednesday, we were off-site, and we did, uh, the focus was team building, and again, the, the team was there. We went to Refreshing Mountain, which is in Stevens, PA. It's north of uh, Lancaster. Uh, so we were there, if you remember Wednesday morning, it was rainy, um, but we were out in the woods, in the rain, in the mud, doing all kinds of really fun, uh, engaging team Yeah, it sounds really fun. Activities. <laughs> they really were. Um, we had a facilitator that guided us through the activities, um, and each activity, of course, led itself to a leadership lesson, and it had us debrief as to how we see that leadership lesson playing out in our group. So again, it was a great activity, especially having, you know, a new player uh, with us. So some of the things that, and it really took us out of our comfort zone in some areas. So some of the things that we um, reflected on at the end, just some of the lessons we learned. We learned about teamwork, that it's not competitive, that we uh, need to leave no one behind. We need to be supportive of one another. We learned about the give and take of leadership. We learned about balance in leadership. We learned how sometimes we tend to uh, uh, associate with those that are just like us, and when you do, you don't really need that other person, so you should stretch and try to associate with people who are unlike you. We learned how we can learn by making mistakes. Sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself to move the, the organization forward. Uh, we learned to reflect on how long does something stay in committee, how long are you taking on the decision making, and tied in with that, we learned that we need to think like an adult, but act like a teenager, because teenagers will take the risk, it will jump right in and make the decision. Uh, we learned about relying on one another, and something that was really uh, neat for them to hear, the facilitator at the end, there were two of them actually that stayed with us, um, really talked at the end and saw, said that they saw in our team that we were really a strong team. They said they could tell that we trusted one another, and they said that they really appreciated how we supported whoever took whatever leadership role, that everybody was very supportive of one another. So that was that's some great feedback to get from them. So mm -hmm. it was a very productive two days. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Administrative reports, uh, Dr. Furman, do you want to go first? I said before that curriculum is 
instruction and assessment are essential uh, for, for teaching and learning. And then within that, I, it's my job to monitor how that's being implemented, to review the data with my staff, and to make the necessary adjustments. The things outside of the circle, that's the culture and climate of East York. Those are our values. Um, this is what the staff and I believe makes East York the best place on earth. So while I'm doing all of those other things, I have to make sure that I balance those four values. But then the question was asked, how do I measure that? How do you measure that success? How do you know that, that you were successful? And so the bottom half of the page, for me, this is where being a, a principal scratches that itch of being a former coach. Um, once upon a time, BK, the four kids, um, I enjoy coaching basketball and volleyball. And there's just something about the strategizing, the X's, the O's, what is the best offense for against a particular team. At the same token, what's the best defense? And so I kind of I, I look at my job very strategically like that. And so one of the important things that I feel like I have a lot of uh, pull with, that I have a, a, a lot of power to shape our building goals. So this year at East York, we focused on culturally responsive teaching and differentiation uh, of our instruction through the centers or stations. And so I chose those goals based on the data and observations of the previous year, share those with the staff at the beginning of the year, and then through my walkthrough data, my classroom observations, that's how I could measure particularly the differentiation in centers. How was that being implemented? Did I, did I see that? Was it transferring to then that next row, the data that we examine in our morning two meetings? Informally, um, I often I have lunch with students at least three days a week. We sit together and eat, and they tell me what's on their mind with working and not working. And uh, the teachers will survey each of the students in the classes and say, look at the back as well. The data across the bottom, the first three bubbles, are all uh, achievement-based data. I take my staff survey as seriously as I, as I take the achievement, the student achievement data, simply because um, I, I look at it as my job to, to push the staff, support the staff, grow the staff, and uh, so their feedback is invaluable as far as what's working and not working. Yeah. As, I, as I often say, there's one of me about 30-ish staff members at any given time and 300 kids, so I need to do what's best for my staff in order to make sure that they're in turn doing what's best for our students. The areas in gray are those two unknowns that are haunting me yet is the PBAS data and the PSSA data. While there are only two measures of uh, success, I realize publicly they're two very large measures of success, so we'll see. Questions? Thank Anything for Dr. Furman? Thank you very much. Mr. Shirey? Thank you. Uh, well, I'd like to welcome you to the high school. I'm glad <laughs> you're here. <laughs> That's right. I'm hoping you like this room because I think uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Ellis and Dr. Adams, we would love to have you here more often. So I think it's nice. We've got plenty of room for plenty of people if they want to come. Uh, I'm going to talk about, since this is our first time that we had a chance to talk as a, as a high school presentation since graduation, I wanted to highlight that uh, the most. Um, I know many of you were there, uh, but I want to talk to you about some statistics, so uh, those of you who are numbers people <coughs> might like this. First, uh, we did have 213 graduates. Um, <coughs> we did have one who did not graduate, uh, but that student should be graduating the end of July. So we should be at 100% graduation. Um, we did have nine who are going into the military. Um, and then those who are going on to higher ed. Now we have a lot of students who are going right into the workforce, which we applaud those. Um, but we can't really track that as well. Those students who told us they were going to go to an educational institution, we can kind of track that a little better. And so what you have up here are 26 students who are going to stay in your county and do some kind of educational training right here in the backyard, so just over 10%. Uh, we have 95 uh, who are not going to be in York County, but are still going to stay in Pennsylvania. So if you add those two numbers together, um, we have, let me see, 57% 50, of our students are going to stay here in Pennsylvania. Uh, in 
higher education. If you put in, if, if all the other students were going to the workforce state in Pennsylvania, we would have about three quarters of our students staying here in Pennsylvania. We'd have, we would have had about 41% staying right here in York County. And then we do have uh, 28 who are leaving the Keystone State, and we do have one who's going overseas to Scotland, which we thought that was pretty exciting. Accomplishments in the, in the black column here, we do have, we did have two students who are, who are going to West Point. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, you do need a recommendation from the center. Once you get that recommendation, you can apply. And they had 13,827 applicants this year, and they accepted 1,257 students. We had two. The enrollment officer who came here, I, well, I don't know if you call him an enrollment officer. I'm not sure what his technical name was. But, uh, he said he's been doing it forever. Um, and he said to have one in York County isn't unusual, but to have two in one high school is almost precedent setting. setting. Um, he, was, he just couldn't applaud us more uh, than have two right here from, from our graduating class of 213. Um, we did have one student who's going to Stanford on a full uh, athletic scholarship. Uh, we have one student who's going into uh, who uh, earned his way into a paid apprenticeship right here through Kinsley. He was through, he went to through our pre-apprenticeship program, did extremely well, uh, and was awarded one of the, the spots. It is a competitive uh, apprenticeship application. Um, when you add up all of our scholarship awards, um, now these are again. I did I did want to say this. these are all based on student reports to us. Um, so you know these numbers could vary a little bit, even as to you know, what college or university they may go to or go into the workforce, um, they can change their mind. You know? But scholarships, what, were, what was uh, reported to us was over $3 million in scholarships for our 213 graduates. Uh, that was pretty impressive. And we do know for a fact that not everything was reported to us. Uh, we did have 12 National Merit Scholars, uh, three finalists. Um, couple statistics on that I thought would be interesting. Uh, 1.6 million students qualify to be a National Merit uh, Scholar. Um, 50,000 get the recommendation. Of those 50,000, 34 get commended. And 16,000 are semifinalists. And only 15,000 of the 1.6 million students, only 15,000, our finalists. Um, that's less than 1% of all the students who take the PSAT and MSQT assessment. Um, and we had three right here in our high school. Again, very proud. We also had two national Hispanic scholars. Uh, when you look at uh, outside of our high school, uh, this was our fourth consecutive year uh, for U.S. News and World Report. Uh, we did get a silver award. That's our fourth year in a row. There are 28,800 high schools that they evaluate. Uh, of those 28,000, 500 are given a gold medal, and 2,211 are given a silver medal. So we, four years in a row, we were silver. Uh, they look at uh, test scores. They look at how they perform, uh, underperforming subgroups. Um, they look at our graduation rate, and they look at our AP participation. Those are the four categories that they measure. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. Last but not least, within our building as far as uh, what we did with faculty, uh, you did hear about our committee structures earlier from Dr. Ellis, and I know I, I mentioned them. Uh, we did wrap that up, and we do have a um, firm goal set for next year as to what we are advancing. We're advancing on uh, all five of them. Um, and uh, again, we could be more proud of the work that our teachers did. We worked with our teachers to grow teacher leadership through the committee process, uh, and it worked out very well, very, very well. Um, and we also did a run high fight training. Uh, that was just after school ended. Um, the teachers came back that Monday for a half day uh, and gave actually a little bit of extra time that would be time for the 18-19 school year. And what we did is we did an active shooter simulation where we trained teachers on how to uh, blockade the, the classroom doors, uh, how to run and escape out of the building, and what to do if there was a shooter. We 
have eight shooters in our building. Uh, each of them had silly string, and uh, they, we had classroom teachers teaching lessons, and all of a sudden, all, you know, what broke out, and uh, there were active shooters, and they had to go into their, their drill, and uh, what they reported to us was that that real-life experience, uh, they feel they're so much better prepared now in case something uh, horrific would ever happen here. So, any questions? Anything for Dr. Sherman? Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. This might be useful information to put on the website if it's not already there. Or to go even a bit further and make sure the media has some of these statistics. What's that? A press release to the media would be really good with this kind of information in the graduating class. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, last item on uh, my report. I. Uh, Barry's hiding back there behind it. I'd like Barry Girling to stand up. Uh, tomorrow, Barry is going to be recognized at the Adams, Franklin, and York uh, Facilities Director's uh, annual training. He is the recipient of the Dr. Wayne McCullough Outstanding Facilities Director. and want to okay. add our congratulations to that, yeah. Barry. And that concludes my report. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a lot of information, but I did want to go to the public and see if there are any uh, public comments at this point. We typically go to the public for comment more often at these combined meetings than we do when we have two meetings a month. So if there are any uh, comments. <clears throat> okay. Business office. Oh. Yay. Sure. Of course. Thank you. Anyone else? Business office, Ms. Mason. Discussion? If not, then we'll do a roll call. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless we have a contract during that motion passes. Um, the next item, the administration recommends board approval of the AIA services and facility agreement for 2018-19. The facility fee will remain at 50400 Second. Discussion? Quick question. That 50400 is that an additional 50000 or is that still the original amount that we're working on? $50,400. That's the same amount of the contract that we had for seventeen eighteen, but that actually got absorbed in savings um, through the, what we had. Okay, so this year. is 50400 a new 50000 Correct. Okay. Other questions? Discussion? Discussion? Questions? If not, then this roll call. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. During that motion passes. I'll put items D and E together. Um, these are three-year contracts for um, equipment within the district. The first one has to do with um, services 
for supporting the fire and life safety, safety systems throughout the district, and the second one has to do with um, Johnson Controls for the Chiller in the Rock. Motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Questions? Discussion? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Joel? Uh, a couple. One is whether the, first of all, do we have tuition students here? No, we do not. Second, are these tuition values for children independent of their IDP stats? This is strictly for tuition rates that we have to adopt by the code. And that's where there is a difference between the special ed rate and the general student rate. But a lot of my understanding is a lot of the numbers that are pulled to do this report are the same numbers that are pulled into the calculation for charter schools. So you will see a tuition rate for a special ed student as it relates to us getting billed. <laughs> and that's a calculation also. The, the other distinction that's unique with relative to a tuition student, it will be pretty rare for someone to pay tuition to attend York Suburban and then, in fact, the, the district will be obligated to provide them a free, appropriate public education. So it will be an unusual thing to have that occur relative to the district's expenditure for them ultimately. That would surprise me because any district would have the obligation to provide that student in their district of residence with a faith. And that should be the same no matter where you're going, especially within the same IU. It might be appropriate here to say that current board <laughs> policy does not allow for tuition students. Just It does not. Right. right. 
Any other discussion or questions for Ms. Mason on item G? If, if not, then... We need a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion, questions, comments? Anything for Ms. Mason? Okay. Ms. Geyer. Okay, so to begin my report, I'll talk about the final results for our high school spring sports teams that went to postseason. The boys volleyball team earned fourth place in districts after a tough consolation match loss to Elmira. The baseball team unfortunately lost one to four in the opening round of districts to Boiling Springs. As for track and field, Junior Andrew Paskey placed 16th in the state tournament for the 300-meter hurdles event. Lastly, tennis player Parker Lando finished his freshman season as number one in the counties for singles and doubles, which he won with sophomore Liam Waterbury. And Parker also placed third in districts. Moving on, as you can imagine, us students are excited to finally be on summer vacation. The last handful of school days flew by, but they were certainly packed with events across all schools. On May 24th, the class of 2018 graduated after spending the day walking through the previous YS schools that they attended, which is always a powerful experience for both the graduates and the teachers. The following week at Yorkshire and Valley View consisted of kindergarten graduation and celebrations for the end of school featuring a variety of fun and engaging activities. At East Jerk and Indian Rock, the students participated in field days of, full of games and relay races, as well as the fifth grade awards ceremony. At the middle school, there was the annual talent show and fun day on Wednesday, followed by the 8th grade awards ceremony on Thursday. Finally, here at the high school, we were definitely having the most fun in the district as we prepared for and took our final exams to complete the school year. <laughs> for the duration of the summer, there will be all kinds of youth camps and fall sports and preseason training taking place here on campus. That concludes my report. Thank you. Anything for Ms. Geyer? Thank you, and if we haven't already said, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. Okay, committee reports. We have a committee schedule that's been provided. Uh, be sure and communicate with uh, Ms. Irwine if there are questions regarding the schedule. Communications committee, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mrs. Schroeder. Uh, the activity and communications reports are provided. Can everybody hear me? Okay, thanks. <coughs> I'd also like to take this opportunity to announce that the Communications Committee is anticipating a new website for York Suburban on July 1st, so mark your calendars. Apparently there's all kinds of technological stuff you have to do, but since I don't understand any of it, I won't try to explain it. That concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Thank you. Facilities. Mrs. Um, Freyrich. Facilities, the, the uh, minutes of the May 9th uh, meeting are available. And just a quick uh, rundown here um, of things that are going on, some of the bigger things. This, uh, this summer we're doing uh, sidewalk replacement. Uh, oh, excuse, me, excuse me, excuse me. This summer at the middle school we're doing a roof replacement, uh, the middle school chiller, um, East York HVAC system, and you can see work being done to the <coughs> what most of us would consider the gym or cafeteria, and there will be a massive seal coating uh, project uh, on this side of the district at the high school value and high school track, um, and next summer we will do the 
other half of the district when we don't have quite as much construction going on. Um, the committee has begun looking at projects for the 1819 uh, season, which would be next summer's work. There are several large items. One of them is the, um, the roof at East York needs to be uh, replaced. And since it's such a large ticket item, the committee is going to recommend that we get working on that, get the prep work done, and get out to bid early on that individual project uh, with the potential to be caused. Some of our roofing projects have come in significantly under our estimates, uh, but perhaps this one will also, and it will better help us uh, figure out how much money we have for other projects. Um, we did have a nice uh, presentation by a Ben Kleins uh, regarding his Eagle Scout project at our last meeting, and he's going to be building a thing called a Gaga Pit. Uh, and for those of you who don't know it, I have a picture of a Gaga Pit. I can pass this around if you would like, and pass that down, pass it back to me. Uh, kind of a, a, a dodgeball kind of pit, if you will, for elementary and, and primary students where you actually bat the ball around with your, your hand. You're in an enclosed area that's about three foot high enclosure. And um, there are ways when the students are, are hit with the ball, they can climb over the top. There is also a, a gate that opens for those children who might uh, need handicap accessibility. And um, Dr. Stoltz was with us, and she and the staff are very excited about having this newest addition down to their playground equipment. And there is space in the back of the building near the playground area. So um, there are a lot of good things going on. Barry and his uh, Barry, you've already, it's Barry, did Barry just scoot out already? Mm -hmm. I think his Barry, phone rang. Barry, Barry scooted out, yeah. Um, uh, he and his staff are working very diligently. If you look around the district, you see things going on with pruning and, and uh, landscaping, as well as a lot of the moving other teachers around. And for example, moving everything out of the admin building and getting everybody settled over here at the high school and then moving them all back sometime in July. Yes, Mr. Shirey, they will get out of your office eventually and, and leave you all alone. So um, lots going on. And our congratulations from the committee to Barry on his award that he'll be receiving tomorrow. That concludes my report. Finance. Okay, the Mr. Minutes, Sears. Minutes of our May 16th meeting are provided. And we have the online agenda with the hotlink. Uh, we met on June 13th, could be at 4.30. Minutes as usual. We had the administrator report. A couple highlights from that were discussions about the Pareto captive reinsurance, reinsurance arrangement, which is essentially there to slow premium increases. I think that the uh, committee did a really good job of ferreting out the alternatives. Some very detailed information available to the handout that came from our insurance consultants. Um, we also talked about the food service budget and the dilemma that we have whenever there's a surplus in that budget and how we may or may not use it. Uh, there was also a report on our food service delinquent accounts, and we're in pretty good shape here. There were five we were turned over for collection. One was paid as of now, I believe, for the still the main accounts, and unless there's been activity since the last week. Uh, a few months back, we, as a board, approved something called a parameters resolution, and that gives us an opportunity <coughs> to do some interesting forward thinking about our debt load. And we're at a point now where we need to consider some additional steps on how to manage that or how to take advantage of it. And so we will probably have a presentation by Ken Phillips in the near future to give us a little bit of an update on our options. We also talked about the COBRA coverage, which we approved tonight. And uh, there was no public comment. As far as I know, we don't have a date set for our next meeting. That's it. One of the attachments. There, there is one for July 18th that's that, on the calendar. Really fixed. I'm, a, I, I'm just saying what's okay. on the school calendar. The calendar. You're the chair, so you decide, but that's what's on better, the calendar. Firm it up. <laughs> right. And the Very good. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Sears? If not, then moving on to personnel, back to Mr. Robinson. Thank you again, Mrs. Schroeder. Please note there is an additional item in the addendum located at the end of the agenda that will consider with the consent agenda and a late-breaking addition that will consider separately if there are no objections. Proceed. Hearing none, 
Consent agenda. You have before you the personnel report, which includes resignation, termination, appointment, employment, leave of absence, reassignment, reappointment of fall coaches, substitute teacher, and volunteers. Would any board member like any of these items considered separately, or are there any questions on any of these items? If not, the chair moves approval of the below-mentioned items. Is this for my discussion? I sure. Need a second. Yeah, a second. second. I'll second. Now, Mr. Sears. It's uh, item E7. Just requesting to add the total cost of that column. Just for information. Okay. Roll call or Ms. Mason? Just be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless they have votes to the contrary. Bring on motion passes. We have some new employees. You some want to introduction? Introduction. Okay, very good. We do have, I believe, two of our new employees here. Um, Kayla Jacoby, stand. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Kayla <coughs> is uh, going to be teaching third grade at Indian Rock. She's coming to us um, after commuting to Prince William County, <coughs> teaching um, third grade. I'm sorry, fourth grade. Yep. Um, there. So we're very pleased to have Kayla on board at Indian Rock. Thank you. Welcome. We also have with us Nicole Schock, who's also going to be teaching third grade, but at East York. We were fortunate enough to have Nicole with us for a few months um, during a maternity leave. She was a long-term sub, did such a great job. We got to see her report that she built with the kids and the oh, great. Uh, great growth that they made. So we were excited when she applied for the permanent position. And we're excited to have her at East York. Sure. Welcome. And then not with us tonight is Casey Ryder, who is going to be joining us at the high school. She is uh, living in Delaware. She teaches in Seaford, Delaware, uh, seventh grade English language arts, and she's going to be joining the English department at the high school. Great. Okay. Thank you. And now for the late breaking addendum. Recommended board approval of a $5,000 stipend for Dr. Tawn Ketterman that is to be a 100% salary deferred to her additional 403B for additional administrative duties and responsibilities on behalf of the district during the 2017-18 school year. Does that need a motion? Is there a second? Is that a motion? I'll second Yeah, it's a motion. I'll yeah. second that. Uh, discussion? If not, let's do, she probably do roll call for this. Yes. Sanders? No. Byron? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Spillett? Yes. Sears? No. Trader? Yes. And that concludes my report. Anything else for Mr. Robinson? Okay. Uh, Policy report in Mr. Toman's absence. Yeah, I'll, Are I'll, you going to pinch hit? I'll pinch hit on okay. policy. Uh, item two is the list of policies that went through the committee. And what we did was provide a copy of what the policy uh, with markups would look like and then the language. And then there's a third step. Uh, that uh, Wendy would do upon approval. She would go in. These are all housed in board docs. So um, consequently, um, the, um, the process would be to eliminate all of the bold and underlining, and there would be a clean uh, document that would be uh, stored in board docs that uh, would would show uh, how those policies were um, were handled. So all of the policies that are listed under two have been in committee and are um, uh, ready for action. Is there a committee member who would make the motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion about the uh, new policies? 
question. Green, one had a question about whether you got the personnel consent agenda vote. She had, she didn't hear it. Yes, I did. We did. Yeah. Yep. So, so, if not, then we'll proceed with, uh, are we okay? Yeah, as far as I know, as long as she got the vote on the entire personnel consent agenda, that's what Tom was concerned about. And right, I we did. At the very end of it, so I couldn't give her a yes or a no. Yeah, we I did that. It happened by the head nodding. Yep, we did that. Okay, so back to policy. <laughs> you want to do a roll call then? This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless they can vote to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. And then item three are two policies that. I am uh, asking uh, to keep an eye on uh, either at the July board meeting or at uh, certainly no later than the um, next policy committee meeting, which I think is, is set for August. So uh, they're marked up, uh, ready to review, uh, and it might be appropriate in the July board meeting uh, for those actually to have action, but they're not needed tonight. Okay. Okay. Is there another committee that would like to report out? And since that's a lot of business, maybe I'll go to the public again. Is there uh, any comment from the public regarding any of the items we've covered? Okay, moving on to the uh, LIU report. Okay, the uh, report from the uh, I think the dawn's early light is, is there. Yep. Uh, for the joint authority, I want to report, and I'm sure that uh, Dr. Redding already knows this, we approved the yearly budget for the um, learning center here in York. It'd be $1.583 million. Um, each district share will be $68,631. I believe this is the same as last year. Um, and that concludes my report from the uh, LRU. All right, going back to you for York Adams Academy. I'm pleased to announce that we had two additional people uh, added to our list of graduates that I had uh, presented last month, Ayana Dixon and Holly Furman, bringing our total for the year to 12 students who graduated from York Adams Academy that had a grand total of 139 graduates this year coming out of York Adams Academy. So that's one of the highest numbers we've ever had, and we are very pleased, and we'll be clipped be there. They will begin classes again on August 15th, and that concludes my report. Thank you. <coughs> uh, York Adams Tax Bureau, Ms. Mason. No report. Uh, the, as far as the York County School of Technology report, um, I'm pleased to say that the uh, School of Technology held their commencement on June 5th, and the land purchase has been finalized. Thanks to an overwhelmingly positive vote, uh, board members may recall that uh, individual board members were asked to vote uh, on the land purchase. And the motion needed 64 yes votes to pass, and there were 90 votes in favor, 27 against, and two abstentions. So that will uh, move on. And that concludes. Oh, uh, I do encourage you uh, to read at your leisure, the um, mini board report that is always provided to you. Um, that's, there's a lot of information and a lot of things that go on at the School of Technology. Uh, so to keep abreast of those, and just a reminder, I sort of harp on this, but those are our students as well. So um, please uh, take some time to read that uh, board report. Are there any visitors we need to recognize? We thank um, members of the public for attending. Um, there is also uh, a schedule of board meeting and committee reports. Joel, did you see that? Got it. Okay. The 18th of July, 5 o'clock, finance. Be there or be square, huh? Um, and it's my... Um, honor to recognize Dr. Larry Redding for his service to the York Suburban community. We have a handy Andy plaque for you. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, it, it reads, uh, in recognition of your dedicated service to the York Suburban School District from October 2017 through June 2018. And we are eternally grateful to you for your uh, 
service in uh, our time of need. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, back in October, uh, when the board uh, selected me, I made some remarks and I was cleaning up files in one of the moves I was making here in the last couple, uh, couple uh, weeks. We talked about building a bridge between you know, what was and what will be and that I would uh, serve as that, uh, yes, if I could say it, Bridge builder, uh, and I and I, I feel good about uh, what we've done this year. Certainly, if you look at uh, the uh, number one concern was getting a superintendent hired and ready to start, and we could you know we have Dr. Williams ready for July first. Uh, personnel issues, curriculum issues, uh, really kept pace uh, with lots of lots of activity. This board certainly needs to be commended for the extra hours that went into not just the day-to-day uh, -day operations of the district, but the, the search process and, and the involvement of the community. Um, I certainly uh, greatly appreciate what our building administrators were able to do day in and day out to maintain the quality instruction that uh, this district uh, uh, is, is accustomed to and um, sort of uh, using this time to thank everyone for the, the support that they provided to me to uh, make this journey uh, happen. So again, thank you. I appreciate the time and certainly uh, uh, accept this as uh, gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, one more time I'll go to the public. Any public comment? Anything from the board for the good of the order? If not, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>